Shalom. I want to give praise and glory to you, by some house, by some of the dash. And the ones that are the apostles of great most, Tommy Tony is true. And peace, blessing, and salutations to the whole for let's and Slack here for the noise. I don't know what the names are doing, man. Well, I do know what they're doing. They're working on the garden. But, um, yeah, I got I got two lessons to do. So I'm going to start with this one first. The worst air qualities ever recorded. Images are startling, even apocalyptic. They say being outside is like smoking 3 to 11 cigarettes a day. Wow. The more pollutants in the air, the worse quality air people are up against. You could not see anything behind this reporter this morning. The air quality in New York City today was the worst in the entire world. Even worse than Delhi, the Indian city which is known for its noxious air. And in Times Square, tourists were shocked by the smoke. 100 million people here in the U.S. across 13 states are impacted all due to the wildfires that have erupted in Canada. Several large wildfires burning out of control and just getting huge plumes of this smoke. Look at this scene in New York, something like the surface of Mars. The best advice right now is to stay indoors. Many school districts have canceled field trips and all outdoor activities. If we look at the weather, it says air quality alert, you know, 160, unhealthy. Should we even be outside right now? Well, again, that unhealthy refers to the sensitive parts of the population. I think for most adults, healthy adults, uh, it won't, we won't have much of an effect. So if you have an air conditioner, you shut the windows, use recycled air setting on your air conditioner, and uh, that'll keep the inside as clean as possible. It feels a little weird. My eyes are a little burning. My throat's a little sore. It feels kind of strange. Yeah, and I'm also, I, I have some uh, health conditions, some respiratory, I have a, a mild asthma, and I also feel tightness yeah. and uh i've been just taking it easy and look what's making a comeback masks lots of people wore them during the pandemic but these guys might not be enough for smoke so the mask you'd need is called a p100 it's the one with the filters on the side like this that you'd wear when you're painting or working with noxious fumes and you see <laughs> Like when I saw that, when I saw the smoke covering America, I was going to say New York, it reminded me of um, Revelation 18, because you got to remember, all those nuclear warheads are, are going to come over to America and leave it desolate and utterly waste it. So you got to imagine all them explosions and all that smoke that's going to fill the land of North America. I like the scriptures be saying, man. Let's go to Revelation 18. Here, yeah, Revelation 18 and 1, and it says, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mildly with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Oh, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And yeah, I'm going into that wine being made drunk with that wine, meaning they've basically digested the ways of America, its philosophies, they've, they've taken it in, man. <clears throat> and carrying on, it says. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come over my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. So yeah, man, the Israelites are in, what should I say, the majority of the Israelites can be found in the door of Babylon, which is America. Because you got to remember, man, the, in 2nd Edges chapter 13, it talks about the that peaceable multitude, being the ten tribes, being the northern kingdom, man, they went to the land of Asaraf, um, which is now called America. And, and when Christopher Columbus came over, what he saw was the ten tribes dwelling there. <clears throat> so most of the Israelites were already over there in North America. And guess what? In order to fulfill the prophecy, 
they had to go bring the southern kingdom over to the land of Asareth. Because like it makes mention in Jeremiah chapter 50, Judah and Israel were oppressed together. <clears throat> and yeah, also gone into the plagues, like it makes mention in verse 4. The, the last one being um, that nuclear destruction. And also the death, famine and mourning. <clears throat> you don't want to be a partaker of that, man. But we know the two thirds are over there. They're going to be burned out of the land. <clears throat> and it says, for her sins have reached unto heaven. And God have remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you. And double unto her, double according to her works. In the cup which she have filled, filled to her double. So yeah, man. <laughs> when the Lord talks about leaving the door of Babylon desolate, it's going to be on a whole different scale than what we can imagine right now. It's going to be on a completely different scale, man. Like, literally, the prophet's talking about it, it isn't going to do it justice, man. <laughs> like, the scriptures may mention, also say, like, Solomon may mention... Vision of Psalm 17 and 1, it says, For great are thy judgments, and cannot be expressed. Therefore, unless the souls have erred. <coughs> I mean, no day could tell it's going to be a time like never before. So, these judgments that the Lord going to bring out is, is going to be on a whole different level, man. Especially that nuclear destruction. There's, there's going to be, literally, when um, Esau basically sent fire down from heaven being on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yeah, that, that was devastating. And the World War One and World War Two that was devastating. But that's that's not going to compare or should I say it it, it can't be compared to the nuclear destruction or the desolation of America. It's going to be on a whole different level, man. And it says, how much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I see a queen and I'm no widow and shall see no sorrow. And that's basically going into the plagues that the Lord is going to bring upon them. <laughs> it's not going to happen. The thing, they're going to be sitting there and everything's going to be good. The thing that these, the plagues that the Lord is going to bring isn't going to affect them. And it says, Therefore shall her place come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord, Yahweh Shai, who judge of her. So you see, the Lord gonna send them plagues, man. Yo, the Lord sendeth the mighty plagues, man. You know, you know what? Let me get that, man. Let me get that. All oh, praise to Yahweh Shemahu Shai, man. Second hundred sixteen. And one, it says, Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia, and woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. Gird up yourselves with cloths of sack and hair, and beware your children, and be sorry, for your destruction is at hand. And yeah, when it makes mention of um, girding yourself with cloths of sack and hair, and beware your children, that's a sign of mourning. Verse 4, it says, A fire is sent among you, and who may quench it? Plagues are sent unto you, and what is he that may drive them away? May any man drive away a hungry lion in the wood, or may anyone quench the fire in the stubble when it have begun, or so like it, have begun to burn. May one turn again the arrow that is shot of a mighty, shot of a strong archer. They yeah, are going to those intercontinental ballistic missiles. And it says, the mighty Lord sendeth the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? And that's what Esau doesn't realize. <laughs> Esau doesn't realize. He, he can't stop these plagues, man. He, he ain't gonna stop the judgments from the Lord from, from coming to pass. This is a fire shall go forth from his wrath. And who is he that may quench it? He shall cast lightnings and who shall not fear? He shall fun and who shall not be afraid? The Lord shall threaten and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder his presence? The earth quaketh, the foundations, the rough, the sea rises up with waves from the deep, and the waves of it are troubled. And the fishes arrive also before the Lord and before the glory of his power. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that 
He's shooting for a shark and should not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. Yeah, going to those intercontinental ballistic missiles. Because, yeah, they are going to be coming from one part of the world to the other. From one continent to another. You're going to have missiles coming from Asia and coming over to North America, man. And it says, Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consumes the foundation of the earth. Yeah, until Babylon is a complete desert. So there's nothing left, man. <clears throat> and look at that, it's 944, man. All praise to you, how much you might have man. And it says, like as an arrow, which is shot of a mighty archer, returns not backward. Even so, the plagues that shall be sent upon earth shall not return again. Woe is me, woe is me, who would deliver me in those days? The beginning of sorrows and great mourners, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? And... The elect of the elect, they're going to trust in Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, man. And they're going to be delivered. Because they believe in Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, man. And they've made Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai their refuge. Now going back to Revelation 18. And... Yeah, verse 9, it says, And the kings of the earth, who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, like I makes mention in Revelation 17, the, um, the ten horns given their power, or the ten kings given their power unto the beast, and they have one mind. <clears throat> and like it also makes mention, they gave their strength unto the beast. <clears throat> Commit fornication and live deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament for her, when they shall see the smoke of her burning. So yeah, man, America's going to be a worldwide... It's not a worldwide event. It's going to be um the destruction of America is going to be displayed worldwide, and everyone's going to see it, man, including those <laughs> that had investments in America, man. And it says, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, "Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come." So yeah, man, the Lord wiped it out, man. You're going to leave it desolate. And it says, And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. <laughs> so you see, those that had investments over there in Babylon, or um, what's it called, um, businesses over there in Babylon, they're going to be, they're going to be crying, man. <laughs> they're, they're going to be weeping, man. They're going to be, they're going to be um, having their hands on the floor, crying and crying into the ground, man. Smacking the floor. Why? Because they've lost everything. They literally have nothing now. And it says, The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones, and of pearls and fine linen, and purple and silk and scarlet and all dying wood, and all manner of vessels of ivory, and all, mass and, and all manner of vessels of most precious wood, and of brass and iron and marble, and cinnamon and odors and ointments, and frankincense, and wine and oil and fine flour, and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and the and slaves and souls of men, and the fruits that thy soul lusted after, are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. <laughs> Why? Because like this scripture's been making mention, man. America is going to be left as a desert. So all these things that were once there is going to be destroyed and demolished. <clears throat> and it says, um, the merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. So, yeah, man, <laughs> like I made mention, you know, when someone just, just loses it, they've, they've finally lost everything and they've got nothing now, and their hands and knees crying <clears throat> hysterically, they're going to be doing that, man. And sing, alas, alas, the great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. And this is talking about Babylon because it also makes mention of that in um, Revelation 17. Over here, 
This verse 3 it says, So he carried me away in the spirit in the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names and blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And that woman that he's talking about is America, also known as Babylon. And the beast being the seven heads and ten horns being NATO and the European Union. And like he made mention, the woman sitting on top of the beast, man, being America, basically controlling it. Having power over it. <laughs> and like it makes mention in verse 4, it says, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet colour, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and the abominations of the earth. <clears throat> and also, like it makes mention down here in Revelation 17 and 18, it says, And the woman which thou sawest, the one that was sitting on the beast with seven heads and ten horns is the great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. <clears throat> and that being America, man. And it says, verse 17, it says, For in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every ship master and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. So, yeah, man. <laughs> all those stocks... All that gold and silver they had, and those cryptocurrencies, those businesses that they had, is going to be gone. <laughs> and it says, And cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads, and that's the sign of mourning, and cried weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein we were made rich, or they had ships in the sea by reason of their costliness, for one hour is she made it desolate. So there's going to be nothing left, man. And this is rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets. For God have avenged you on her. And the mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall the great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. <laughs> so like it always keeps making mention, man. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. In the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah. And the neighbouring sees the wrath, save the Lord. There should be no son of man to dwell in it. <clears throat> it's because it's going to be left desolate, man. There's going to be nothing left. And yeah, man, it's not going to rise again. Just like um, the pagan Roman Empire when they fell. And he talks about the deadly wound that was healed. That was the pagan Roman Empire rising back up. Coming back as way as um, America also known as the door of Babylon, it's not going to rise back up again. It's going to be made desolate and it's going to be desolate forever. And it says, and the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpets, trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And yeah, man, the music industry, <clears throat> literally one that comes to my mind is, um. I think it's Universal Records and um, even um, the Rockefeller, well, what's it called? Um, I forgot what it's called, but it's, 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 it's basically um, Rockefeller Music Industry, something like that. <clears throat> and it says, um, and, no, and no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more at Indy, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at Indy. And yeah, man. That, that work that was going on over there in America. <clears throat> and those who um had had um, a specific skill set and the works in um over there in America, all that's going to be done away with. <clears throat> and it says and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all indie, and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all indie. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by <sighs> it's okay. It says, For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived, and in her was found the blood of the prophets, and of saints, and of all that was slain upon the earth. <coughs> you know, it's good to mention, man. The Lord's going to revenge, or take, or, or should I say, avenge the prophets and apostles that were slain in the midst of her. Reward.
Yeah, Revelation, Revelation 11 and 18, it says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were... Actually, wait, no, that's not it. You have Revelation 11 and 18. Yeah, it says, And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, and that they shall be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. And yeah, man, that's going to be the light end of Esau Eden. His habitation is going to be left desolate. <clears throat> and they're going to go into captivity. And they're going to serve bondage, or should I say hardcore bondage. <clears throat> and after they've served their, their, um, their sentence, they're going to be utterly destroyed, man. They ain't gonna be none of them left. As it makes mention in the book of Obadiah, man. Obadiah 1 and 18. And this is the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall be not be any remaining of the house of Esau. For the Lord Yahweh Bashim Hashem have spoken it. <clears throat> and also let me get this. Perish. Job 20 and 5. And it says that the triumphant of the wicked is short. And the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment. Though his excellency mount up to the heavens. And his head reach unto the clouds. Basically Esau exalting himself. Why? Because of um, the riches and the wisdom that he has. And it says, Yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, Where is he? He's a flower, where's a dream? I shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. The eye also which saw him shall see him no more. Neither shall his place any more behold him. <clears throat> so there you go, man. <laughs> there you go. Esau gonna be gone <clears throat> because literally in the kingdom, there's there's no need for Esau because it's going to be the time of righteousness, man. We we don't need wickedness no more. We need righteousness, and that's what's going to come forth from Zion, man. <clears throat> like he makes mention in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah. Yeah, Isaiah 10, 3, says, And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let's go to the mountain of the Lord, Yahweh Hashem HaShah, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For of Zion shall go forth the Lord, and the word of the Lord, Yahweh Hashem HaShah, from Jerusalem. So yeah, man, the nation is going to learn righteousness, man. It's going to be a time of righteousness, a time of keeping the law, man. <clears throat> and who else but the nation of kings and priests to teach the other nations how to do it we're going to be perfect perfect in that day man but yeah man i hope this lesson was edifying i'm going to give all praises and all glory and shalom